Okay. <laughs> hey Dunchbags, what's going on? It's Landon Remixes here, and it's that time of year for my top 10 video series. Now, if you don't remember, in 2014 I had one top 10, and that was my top 10 albums video. In 2015 I had my top 10 albums, and I think it was top 8 EPs, and this year I decided I'll be doing three of them. And to kick it off, we have the top 10 worst albums and EPs of 2016. I was thinking about doing a lot more different types of top 10s. I just kind of figured out that I just wanted to start with this one, get out what was the absolutely worst, cringiest, most disappointing albums of this year, at least for me, and to be a contender on this list, it had to be an album or an EP that I reviewed, either in terms of a full review or a rapid fire review. In this video, I'll mainly be talking in terms of electronic music, because that's most of the content found on my channel anyway, so that would only make sense to do that, but you definitely will find a few outliers here and there branching into pop and rock music. <laughs> now, of course, some people watching this are going to have albums and EPs that are in this video that they actually liked, and you just have to remember that this is strictly my opinion and not yours, and that's just how it goes. No disrespect for you, the viewer, for your music taste, only lost respect for the artists that produce these albums and EPs. Let's dig into this. Number 10 is Wild World by Bastille. It was actually a struggle for me trying to figure out whether or not I actually wanted to put this album in the top 10, and I ultimately decided, yes, it would probably be a good idea, but just to put it at the very bottom for the very specific reason why it's on this list, which is that the musical content found within the album isn't necessarily terrible, it's just that this album came as a severe disappointment for me as such a big fan of Bastille, and that's very unique for this album compared to other albums on this list. In fact, the worst part about it is probably that I was really, really excited for this album to come out. In fact, I went and got it on release day, I got that nice Target exclusive, and listening through it, there just wasn't a whole lot I was getting down to. It's like they took all their clever lyricism and metaphors and decided to replace them with 50s and 60s talk radio samples, and it just... I don't know what they were thinking. I really don't. Uh, this album is not worth <laughs> the pretty penny I paid for it. Um, just, just not much to be found here. Like I said, there were a couple really good singles on this, but other than that, there isn't really much to be found, especially in the, the amount of tracks that were in the deluxe version of this thing. What happens when you take a Colorado-based punk rock group and turn them over to EDM for a cash grab? You get my number nine, which is the Sleepless EP by Breathe Carolina. Now I can be honest, I didn't absolutely hate their initial transition into EDM. In fact, I liked quite a bit a couple of their very early singles, but it seems like with this EP, they're very much so directly going to what is the exact popular sound right now in the electronic music scene? How can we fit the Spin and Records lineup? How can we do that perfectly? And it seems at this point that Spin and Records is just basically becoming the next Ultra Records by just putting out the most commercial sounding stuff they possibly can. They don't even have a distinct sound throughout their label anymore. They are simply grabbing cash, and Brief Caroline is the perfect example of this. Of course, there are a couple really good jams on this one. I really loved Nights, and See the Sky was also a pretty cool track, but the majority of this EP just to, seems to be a giant copy-paste of exactly what the rest of the scene is doing, and I just really wasn't thrilled with it, especially from a group that I actually thought was kind of different in the punk rock scene, even if their electronic influence stuff was just a little bit cringy. Um, they, they probably change for the worse with this, I'm sorry. I used to have a lot of respect for Fetty Legrand. In fact, his Electro House tracks were some of the songs that initially got me into electronic music in the first place, but this album just was a total flop. I don't know what happened with it. In a way, it kind of reminded me of Laidback Luke's last album, where he invites a ton of collaborators and basically just steals their sounds. It happened with Merkin Cremont. It happened with Hall and Rush. It happened with Cobra Effect. Just track after track, there's no original ideas flowing through this. And then of course there's Keep On Believing, which is the completely unnecessary vocal cut of Don't Give Up, which at one point was one of my all-time favorite Electro House tracks. I don't know if I can say that anymore. I'm just not seeing any innovation. Where are the new ideas? They all seem to be coming from his collaborators on this album. I guess the only reason why Something Real didn't land higher on this list is because I do feel like Fetty Legrand keeps a consistent quality throughout, which I can respect. A lot of really great collaborators, both in vocals and production, on Borges' debut album, 13, so I had high expectations for this thing, and I was just completely let down by this mess of trash pop EDM. <laughs> I expected so much more from you, Kashmir. <laughs> so much more. For number six, I just have one question for Excision. 
how long can you keep writing Skrillex's sound from freaking 2010 before people stop listening to you? I just don't understand it. I did not love Codename X, and this album was not an improvement at all. Number five is the fourth studio album from Cash Cash, although they'd like you to think that it's their debut album. Blood Sweat, and Three Years. Yet another pop punk group that switched over to EDM to stay relevant, except Cash Cash has done it a little more successfully over the last three years. But that's where this album comes through, and it's just bad. I can even picture Cash Cash saying, hey, let's combine all our most commercially successful singles from the last three years onto one album, and then maybe throw a few other ones onto there, and none of this is really worth anything. Of course, there were a few really good jams. I've really gotten into the track Hero featuring Christina Perry a lot more recently, especially since they did a, a deep mix, I think it was, that was featured on Proximity. I like that one quite a bit. I like a lot of their chords and progressions in different parts of this album, but in general, this thing really just feels... <laughs> I know I've said it about a few ones on this one, but it feels like a cash grab, like it really does. It's the, it's the definition of it, because they literally took a bunch of new songs and then shoved them on top of literally every other commercially viable thing they've released uh, since they turned over to EDM. Just a collection of Cash Cash's greatest hits along with a bunch of half-baked new songs. Really disappointing one, I'd say, from Trash Trash. Number four is Welcome to Our Church by Black Tiger Sex Machine. Now, I don't really know what I expected with this album. I did like a couple of BTSM's previous singles before they dropped this album, but I managed to keep my expectations pretty low, and even then, I was somehow disappointed with this record. No surprises either on this one, and definitely not with their collaborators. Just a big old compilation of 2015's Electro House scene. There's no kind of theme or anything like that tying this thing together. It was just unimpressive, I guess you could say would be the best way to explain this album. Number three is actually going to be a tie between Exhale by Thousand Foot Crutch and Unleashed by Skillet. Now the reason these two are grouped together is because at one point, believe it or not, Skillet and Thousand Foot Crutch were two of my favorite bands. As you guys might know, I grew up in the Christian rock and pop scene. Owl City was actually the artist who originally got me in to electronic music. So when I was first getting into that scene, Thousand Foot Crutch and Skillet were two of the bands that were on the top of the food chain in that scene per se. Now since the end is where we begin, Thousand Foot Crutch has continually let me down. Their Oxygen Inhale album was not much better than this one was, but I definitely think this one was a, even a step down from that. I kept my faith in Thousand Foot Crutch pretty low for Exhale, so I wasn't extremely disappointed when this thing dropped, but I was on the other hand for Skillet. In fact, you guys might remember that uh, Unleashed was one of the ones in my mid-year review that I was actually looking forward to. I don't know if a lot of people did, but I liked their album Rise a lot. I thought they dealt with a lot of really heavy topics, especially ones that I could relate to at the time of its release. And on top of that, I think Skillet puts on an absolutely killer live show. I've seen them a number of times, and I've never been disappointed. But Unleashed straight up feels like a cheesier, more pop electronic version of Awake, and that's not an impressive feat to get to. I actually remember in my review of Unleashed, I mentioned how the lyrics of these songs sound like they could be like a WWE theme or something, and then I ended up seeing one of these songs literally on an ad for WWE and I'm, I, I just had a moment of pride in there knowing that uh, in my reviews I'm speaking a degree of truth for a matter. Um, this album just wasn't good and Exhale was not, <laughs> not any better really. And not to say all modern Christian rock is bad, but the new Nine Lashes album was pretty bad too. My number two is Sugar by Tobu and the title says it all. This is the sugary sweet progressive house that we know Tobu to be, and sometimes I just wonder if Tobu knows, like, how bad the quality of the stuff on albums and works like this are. Like, I, I don't even understand how people can listen to this stuff, because literally you can, you can get this kind of content like on an Avicii album, but probably about five or ten times better, because Avicii actually knows how to expand his sound past that generic progressive house sound that we originally known him for. Maybe instead of Sugar, this album should have been called Cheese, because that's precisely what it is. And to top it all off, the only track that I found myself going back to more than once, Damn Son, which I originally thought was a joke, so I just listened to it ironically again and again because I thought it was funny, turned out not to be a joke, which was kind of awkward. Remember that terrible bro step progressive house hybrid that closes out Sugar? Yeah, it turns out Tobu actually made that song years ago, and he was serious, and he meant to include this song 
on the album. Uh, just really not much else to say about this album. I just can't believe that people paid their hard-earned money to buy this thing when Tobu actually has a pretty impressive collection of free music that I've been getting down to prior to this album's release. And my number one, my worst album of 2016, goes to Benny Benassi for Danceaholic. It's time to pack up your bags, old timer, because you have no idea what you're doing anymore. I shouldn't be surprised that Ultra Records wanted to put out something this god-awful, but of course, I still was. Literally, his biggest original, Satisfaction, came out 12 years ago. You need to let it go at this point. I honestly wish I could have just skipped over this one and never listened to it, because that's an hour to an hour and a half of my life that I'm never going to get back. There's absolutely nothing redeeming about this album. In fact, the only tracks I liked were like the older singles from like, I don't know, 2013? I think it was 2013 or 2014 when Benny Benassi released Back to the Pump. That was one of the few that I actually liked on this album. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand who who is listening to this, who is dancing to this, who is going to raves, paying paying to go to raves to listen to this kind of music. I it's it's a joke. It seems like a joke, but it's not. It's not a joke. <laughs> It's, it's literally like hashtag selfie, but I don't think Benny Benassi is joking. I just, I can't with this album. There's, there, I just, I'm done. Okay, okay, this, this year is done. I just can't do it anymore. Um, I guess I'll see you guys soon for my top 10 EPs of 2016 video. That should be the uh, next top 10 video that's coming. But uh, in the meantime, I'm going to use this playlist of uh, top 10 worst albums to fall asleep to because they are so, so mind-numbingly, boringly bad. I'm Landon Remixes, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.